what since the second half really how much they've really struggled Point. Welcome back to the next episode of the journey of a grassroots rugby coach and in today's episode I speak with Thomas Marks. Thomas has worked with the Welsh Rugby Union for about seven years in a development capacity. He's also worked with the RFU. He now works for a business where he helps business leaders and other coaches develop themselves into better people and better coaches. During this chat, we spoke about the use of mentors for your development and how they help you become a better coach, the use of the APES principle for training, timing of his questioning, and how he uses peer-to-peer coaching. I really took a lot away from this chat with Tom, and I hope you do as well. If you like the pod, make sure you subscribe, give us a thumbs up, give us a review, make sure you pass it on to people. The biggest way these pods spread is through word of mouth. So if you know some grassroots coaches that could benefit from some of this input, please feel free to pass it on. Also, if you know any good grassroots coaches out there that you feel we can get some information from, feel free to pass that information on and I'll reach out to them and get them on the pod. Once again, thank you so much for supporting the pod and hope you enjoy it. I guess when I started coaching, I thought, right, I've got to make this look really colourful now. My actual session. So my session plan was nice and uh, fluid. So the pitch looked absolutely amazing. It was colour coordinated and I had bags out. I had tennis balls. I had all this. So one match, before a match, um, it was me and my other coach um, getting ready to start a warm-up. And I was there, but not uh, getting a bit stressed, I guess make sure everything was, was aligned. And then I looked over to my uh, Jeremy, the other uh, coach, and I see him talking to the kind of leaders of the team. I was like, what am I doing? Why am I like stressing about making sure the warm up is nice and looks good? But it's about people and making sure the boys are ready to go. Um, yeah, and I just get like p- passing on that leadership really. That's a big lesson for me. In terms of, um, yeah, I guess being adaptable and making sure you connect with the players first. And then, I guess, the rugby comes after. And that situation was connect with the leaders. You know, your, I guess your coaches on the pitch, really. Your leaders on the, on the team. And then um, they could influence the other players then. That was a big lesson for me. Where I was stressing out about making sure the, you know, it's like you, make, you want to make the your design, your warm up the best has ever been and people like oh wow who's this guy (laughs) so park in the ego side and just connect with the players engage with the players if they are not engaged um yeah you're not gonna go very far really all right tom um so we'll make a start so just just for the listeners mate if you can just in a nutshell um who you are where you are at the moment, and what's your involvement with grassroots sports? Okay, uh, my name is uh, Thomas Marks. Um, in terms of where I am, I'm, as you can tell from my accent, I'm from Wales. <laughs> Sunny Wales today, August, the sun is out. It's not out very often in Wales, but uh, yes, it's out today. Um, in terms of my involvement with grassroots sports, um, I've been involved with the Welsh Rugby Union. Uh, for the last seven years and uh, previous to that I worked for the uh, RFU in England as a Welshman and um, yeah I've always been involved from primary school all the way to universities I've coached several um, senior rugby teams currently coaching my home team now Um, so yeah I I coached when I was 16 so um, and I'm now 37 so, um, yeah, I've got a bit of experience in coaching. I've not the finished article, but um, I'm learning and I'm still curious. Um, does that cover, cover it, Bully? No, that's good, mate. That's good. It's just so people um, know sort of who we're talking to and what their background is. So I've had people from, you know, people that have got 20 plus years coaching at the grassroots level. I've spoken to guys that have been professional coaches, but for whatever reason, they're now back with the grassroots. And 
you know, guys that have been coaching for like a couple of years. So just, yeah. um, no, it's really good that the um, variety that we're getting. Um, <clears throat> yeah, in terms so, of my uh, yeah. kind of people I've coached or kind of teams I've coached, um, in Wales, obviously, they got the, the Scarlets, um, it's got Scars in the 18s, the kind of the player pathway, um, a lot of uh, honours like uh, Welsh Exiles and Welsh Crochet, lots of representative teams in Wales yep. to kind of coach that kind of level. Um, I coach a few people now who are um, like Stephen Varney, who's playing for Italy. I started coaching him on his start of his journey when he was 16. Obviously now playing for Italy, which is bonkers. <laughs> so um, I guess now the business I'm in now, because um, I just left the WIU, I'm gone self-employed. So running my own coaching business. So helping up and coming players, uh, coaches, referees to get better, basically, and trying to facilitate their learning and kind of, um, yeah, that's what I'm all about at the moment. Yeah. <clears throat> no, that, that's good, mate. That's good. Um so back when you, you said in your intro that you started coaching when you were 16, um, yeah. what what got you into coaching? Do you know what? I'm, um, I guess I want to help people. So when I was uh, in sixth form, so year 12 in um, school, uh, one of the PE teachers asked me, oh, do you mind taking a few sessions with... Um, kind of the year sevens at the time, so 12-year-olds uh, kick in, passing, just to help upskill them. So I started doing that in when I was 16. I started working with that team then. <laughs> I think the coach knew what he was doing. Um, so kind of uh, mentor that team and help that team develop. Um, so yeah, I started at 16. I um, obviously where sixth form did my um, PA level coach throughout sixth form and then um, went to do a sports coaching degree at university in Cardiff. I guess ma many people say in Wales that oh, everyone does a sports degree mm. um, but I I've always wanted to be a coach so that's the purpose of doing it and I'm, I'm doing it now for my kind of profession really so I've always, my passion has really been in helping people and making people better so uh, that's how my journey began, really. Yeah, nice. That's, that's interesting um, to re realise at that sort of young age that that's just the, um, the the path that was there for you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, I played rugby as well. So um, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, but I was always on the side. I wanted. Well, the coaches asked me for, can you analyse the game? Can you give feedback to the backs and um, when I stopped playing rugby, when I was about 29, 30, just quite young, really. Um, I just had enough of playing and doing the same old sessions. And I thought, all right, let's go for it now. Start coaching properly and get get into the heart of coaching, really. Yeah, and then you got into that rabbit hole that we call coaching. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's one of the biggest disappointments or one of the heartbreaks you've had as, as a coach along the time, along the journey? Oof. Wow. Good question. <laughs> I guess um, disappointment would be general, like a general view would be someone with talent that doesn't fulfill what they've got. Mm -hmm. However, it's not just <clears throat> lots of paths to that. That's something that really, I guess disappoints me in terms of what they could have been and what they could have fulfilled. But um, I guess it's down to them, really, um, in terms of how they motivate themselves. In terms of heartbreak, um, I was co uh, coaching a team currently called Nant Karedig. And um, basically, we had a great season. The boys at the start of the season, they said, oh, we were down the beach um, training during pre-season. And said, oh, what do you want to do from the season? As in goals. Said, oh, we want to win everything. Said, really? You want to win everything? Said, yeah, yeah, we do. We want to win everything. We've got a realistic chance. Good squad. Okay, fair enough. So that season, obviously, we managed to win the league uh, like with consecutive wins. But then we were in this national uh, Welsh competition, uh, cup competition. 
So we're going through the rounds, stage by stage, quarter final, win at home. Then we had this neutral venue of a semi final against a team called Abu Ghani, and they had an like international, uh, ex international player as a player coach. But we were winning uh, 23 18, and it was like we were 12 minutes over time because the ref wasn't keeping time of the score. So in Wales, kickoffs are generally half past two, finish at four. But it was like quarter past four. Yeah. So it's like, oh, come on now, this has to end. This is semi final now. And then the final is going to be in the Blenheim Stadium, Principality Stadium, mm-hmm. and on television as well. So I thought, brilliant opportunity for these boys to uh, showcase what they've got. But uh, 23 18, they knocked the ball on. So I'm thinking, right, uh, scrum to us and then kick it off the field, we've won. But instead of that, we kind of play that uh, advantage, nine passes to 10, 10 kicks it long into their 22. And their full back catches it, uh, says Mark. So we defend okay, across the 22 and then in the backfield as well. So they tap and go. Now, this is last play. Hands across the line. One of our players comes out to the line for an interception. They make a line break, give the ball to the winger. The winger goes round our full back and then scores under the post. <laughs> from their own 22. 23 all. They kick the conversion. 25-23. Out. <laughs> so in terms of heartbreak, um, yeah, that was one of them, I think, probably. And it still hurts now. And it's like two years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some good lessons for the boys, but... Wow, yeah. yeah. Big lessons. Well, lessons for them and me, probably, and as a coaching team. Yeah. But uh, I guess that was... Kind of heartbreak, plus this was probably my proudest moment as well. As well, in yeah. terms of getting yeah. the community together for that kind of occasion. It's like, oh, it's magic. But um, there we are. What wasn't meant to be then. <laughs> All right. So let's let's flip that on its head. What's some of your greatest moments as a coach? Besides the one you've just given me. Yeah. Um... I guess, I guess winning that league with that, uh, with that, well, my current team going consecutive wins and not losing a game in the season, that's quite uh, satisfying. Um, what else have we done? Yeah, I guess uh, my sc- school team at the time, we won the Welsh under 18 schools final in the Principality Stadium. That same year, actually, of that, as that semi final. Um, so that's really satisfying seeing the boys who I and a coach in year seven, year eight, going all the way through the school life. And it was our last game for school, so it's quite nice. And then getting the parents coming up to me after the game, saying, oh, thanks for giving my son his confidence back again. I guess, I guess rugby is, is a sport, isn't it? But then it's about people. So I'm sure you, you believe you're a great coach with your CV. I guess if you're going to affect those people, it's massive. And that's okay. the parent coming up to me is bigger than winning the game, really, probably, as in uh, satisfying. And uh, because that's the reason I did it, really, to, to make these boys better as people. So, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of wins along the way, but um, I think developing people and making them better and sustaining them in the game. Yeah, no, that's right. And you're right, like when, when a parent comes up to you, whether it's a, a club team or a representative team, and just you know, says you've made a difference to, you know, their child. You just go, well, yeah, that's sort of why we do it. But, you know, we take, we take the wins with the wins. But like you said, when you see those, those kids develop and people like their parents or, or their friends or their grandparents see that difference that, 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 that rugby's given them. Yeah. And, exactly. that, and that you've, and you've had, you've been part of that, like giving them their confidence or taking them to the next level or, yeah, and, you know, it's sometimes it's just small things as well. Oh, that's really good, mate. Um, I think it's, it's, yeah. you, we see it with parents as well, because the uh, thing with school, you see parents from from seven years, so you see the parents <laughs> develop as well in terms of maybe at the start they're like shouting instructions every play of the match, <laughs> but with some um, uh, mentoring and like a uh, relationship with them is like. You know, they, the boys and the girls need to make decisions for themselves on the pitch. So when you're not there and you're shouting instructions, like they need to decide, they may, need to be assertive. So seeing that that kind of development as well is quite nice. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the uh, age-old issue you have with coaching junior football, I suppose, is that the influence from the parents on the sideline. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. That, that's for another day, mate. That's for another day. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But I, I and but but on that, I found um, one of the teams I went back from coaching a senior team back to a junior team, and the first training session we had, we didn't even get out of the club rooms. Had all the players, all the parents in there, and I just set the guidelines. This is what we're going to do. Um, nice. You know, like. Yes, if we win, we win, but I want to develop the children. I don't want you, this is what you can expect from me. This is what I expect from you, blah, blah, blah. Any questions? No, cool. And then that's it. See you next session. And I didn't yeah. get one issue from a parent all year. It was just fantastic. It was just like, yeah. yeah. Um, but there was some off field stuff. Yeah. Never on a game day, never at a training session. It was always, you know. Um, that's good. Good practice. But, oh, mate, it was. You know, it was, I didn't know how it was going to go because I knew there was a few vocal parents in the group, but they sort of, <laughs> yeah. they sort of towed the line. They sort of, um, and it actually gave the, the, the boys the confidence just to go, Mum, Dad, shut up. You know, yeah. you, you're yeah. not helping. So um, <laughs> that's, that's a good, good tip for some young coaches out there. Um, yeah. So along you, and it is, it's a, it's a journey that we're on, mate. And you said, Oh, yeah. You haven't, you haven't, mate, I don't think there's a coach even at the top level that's finished their journey. Um, no. You, when you finish coaching, you still haven't finished. You're never going to be the greatest coach that you that you can be because you know, I heard something the other day, the more I learn, the more I know I don't know. No, I know, yeah. And that just, yeah, yeah. that's, that's coaching. <laughs> the more that's, questions you have, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so what's some of the lessons that you've learned along the way that could help out um, coaches that are just starting on their journey? Yeah, I guess when I started coaching, I thought, right, I've got to make this look really colourful now. My actual session, so my session plan was nice and uh, fluid, so the pitch looked absolutely amazing. It was colour coordinated, and I had bags out, I had tennis balls, I had all this. So one match, before a match, um, it was me and my other coach um, getting ready to start a warm-up. And I was there, but not uh, getting a bit stressed, I guess, making sure everything was, was aligned. And then I looked over to my uh, Jeremy, the other uh, coach, and I see him talking to the kind of leaders of the team. I was like, what am I doing? Why am I like stressing about making sure the warm-up is nice and looks good? But it's about people and making sure the boys are ready to go. Um, yeah, and I just get like passing on that leadership really that's a big lesson for me in terms of um yeah i guess being adaptable and making sure you connect with the players first and then i guess the rugby comes after in that situation it was connect with the leaders you know your i guess your coaches on the pitch really your leaders on the on the team and then um they can influence the other players then that was a big lesson for me where i was stressing out about making sure the you know, it's like you make, you want to make the your design, your warm up the best has ever been, and people are like, oh wow, who's this guy? <laughs> so park in the ego side and just connect with the players, engage with the players. If they are not engaged, um, yeah, you're not going to go very far, really. Yeah, and I like yeah. that park your ego. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. I like that because, like you said, when we first start coaching, we. Um, want everything to be perfect and we've probably watched stuff on youtube or you know some yeah, international yeah. team do something so we're gonna do that and i don't know why i'm doing it it just looks really good and <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you, you try and be the often try and uh what's the word you're trying to outdo yourself before you even start you don't even know what you're doing yeah. um, i guess some of like kind of the youtube stuff uh it's good resources and you can use them i guess sometimes as like primers i call them just to activate and get the boys thinking. Um, however, I think that our jobs and our role as a coach is to stimulate learning. And I see what stuff you do with your scrimmaging online. I love it with the 
how you, I guess you talk about the tight ends and the hookers and the loose sets, the importance of body positions, just how you engage, isn't it? Yeah, and I think, and a lot of coaches, we have these same discussions is you can see the young coaches, they'll see something, you know, um, YouTube or they'll see a team do something on the weekend on the TV, you know, and they're from the Gallagher or, you know, something. Yeah. <laughs> and if you actually said to the coach, what are you trying to achieve? And they'll go, I don't know. <laughs> I, I just saw it. Okay. So take that take that drill in that context that the All Blacks or Wales or France are running yeah, and adapt it to your under-12 team or your under... Like, you can still play that drill, but you might yeah. change the constraints or, you know, you can still get that, but know what, know where you want to finish it and what the outcome is rather than just copying someone else. Yeah, yeah. I guess there's a lot of um, copy paste, isn't there? It's, um, I guess what works in your environment, obviously I'm in Wales, you're in Australia, they would, something I do here wouldn't work with you there, uh, wouldn't engage your boys or girls. Um, so yeah, it's, it's all different, isn't it, to yeah. your environment? Yeah, and that's it. It's sort of but knowing what, what you want to achieve from that drill rather than just running it because you've seen you know, the first grade coach run it or, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just with that in mind, I, I know that you're in Wales and they're pretty, um, the weather can be different than what some <laughs> of our, some of our listeners are, are used to. Um, yeah. So with your sessions, um, how do you keep them, um interesting you know like it's the middle it's the middle of winter people could find 10 or 15 other things to do rather than being out in the cold yeah. um so we've we've got to keep it interesting we've got to keep it fun how do you do that yeah so i guess the fundamentals are some we say over here is apes it's a p e s so uh, session obviously is it active is it purposeful is it enjoyable is it safe so those are the four fundamentals of your session there. If you have, if it's not active, if it's not purposeful, then it's not going to go very far and they're not going to be engaged in it. Um, and then the third one there, enjoyable. So how do you make your sessions enjoyable? Uh, you obviously need to ask your players what they actually enjoy in your session, what they, what they enjoy in training. It might be touch rugby for the whole session for some people. But some people might like full on contact, one to one, five metre channel. <laughs> yeah. So it's, you know, engaging your players. Um, in terms of kind of um, maybe if you're coaching a senior team or any co team, I guess, yeah, I guess in terms of getting enjoyable, I'm, variability is my big thing. I guess I change the sessions quite a lot. Uh, to make it interesting um, and keep the players sharp, really. So, obviously, team building activities. I bring guest coaches in for like different voices. Um, obviously, we train and use different equipment, which is quite good in terms of the catching nets and the cricket nets and um, yeah, things like that. Um, and to what else something enjoyable, I guess. Do, do, I was in conditioning, conditioning with the ball every time, or, or if it's a competition, like tug of war, um, we have like a battle off with the tackle bags. Just to make it more enjoyable, really, more than anything. Um, we have um, kind of team challenges. So in Wales, we like singing. So we'd have maybe a team, get the boys in little groups, and have a sing off then between each other after games, and then the supporters decide who's the best. <laughs> They're going to be at each. Um, so, yeah, just, just having... Um, yeah, making it fun, really. I guess in training, we've done, like... Uh, we've had a prop change clothes with an outside half and just have a bit of fun amongst each other. Whoever's quickest winning the match, and we keep scores then. Um, so a guy called Brad Moore, coach the Scarlet. He's now with New Zealand. And he was big on um, kind of belonging. Um, I guess, have you heard of Owen Eastwood? He's got a book out, I think, called Belonging. It's a good one for you. You enjoy okay. it. Um, feeling part of something, really. If you feel part of something, you got to stay. So, um, 
yeah, just make it enjoyable every session, not just like one off. Most people do like fun things in a pre season activity, and then in the season, they just go, you know, mundane session to session to match, and then the season goes on like that. I guess a bit tedious. Um, so I'm, I'm curious now about this theming people use. I'm not sure if I'm going to use it yet, but um, I quite like the idea of it, having a theme for each season, but it has to come from the players, you know? So, um, yeah, those are a few ideas in terms of keeping it active and enjoyable, I guess. Yeah, uh, that's really good. And that's a really good point about keeping... It's it's a game, you know? It, it, at yeah. the end of the day, it's still a game, and some people just get luck, get, are lucky enough to get paid to play a game. Like, yeah. Um, and if, you know, I've, I've seen professional teams and a lot of their training is... Game, like games but you know it's high intensity and you know but they're, they're playing you know 2v2 or 3v3 or you know 8v6 or whatever whatever the coach wants to get out of the, the session but yeah. they're always you know going to the days where you just do that straight line passing drills up and down the field type stuff um, yeah yeah and that that's that's pretty pretty good if young coaches can get that mindset that you know make everything a look Okay, there's going to be some things you can't do as a game, but the majority of it <laughs> is, a, is a game. Um, yeah. Make it enjoyable. Play them against each other. Like you said, mismatch people, um, all that type of stuff. Um, no, good. I, I like it. In terms um, of um, trying to think of ideas as a, in terms <laughs> of engaging players. So what I kind of do in some of my sessions is pose problems. Usually what usually happens, say... Um, my team plays on a Saturday, on a Tuesday night then, generally, like coaches, this is just general, the coaches will come in with a attack and defence review, this is what we've done, these are the stats, and these are solutions, okay? And then we go out and do the session. So, uh, a few months back, I thought, right, this is wrong, because this, it should be coming from the players, they should watch the, the video if they want to watch it. <laughs> and then come up with a plan then, solutions to what they've been doing wrong. It could be not exploiting space, not seeing the fullback isn't uh, in behind the line. Um, so they come up with solutions themselves. And then, you know, it's like if they come up with solutions, it's more powerful than you telling them, yeah. I think. Yeah. And so posing problems and, yeah, for them to come up with... Um, Solutions on the game, whether yeah. it be technically or tactically, I guess. Yeah, I like that. And because then they've got the buy in for the solution, and then yep. they're responsible, they've got responsibility and ownership of it as well. Yeah, yeah. So then you can also then you can give it back to them and go, well, guys, this is what you this is what you guys wanted to do. This is what you guys yeah, saw. Exactly. Now you're not, you're not, you know, what. What are we doing? What? Are, why are we not doing what you guys want in attack or, you know, fixing this error or whatever? So, yeah, it gives them that ownership around it. Yeah. But I don't know, with backlines and um, for them to come up with backline moves against a certain defence. Yeah. And when I've suggested ideas, that I go 70% in. <laughs> but then, then when they've come up with a move and then it comes off in a match, then that's it then. They've taken it to the next level then. Mm. So I said, I think, obviously, a forwards could do that in terms of line out where you attack, uh, scrum time, content area. Yeah. Yeah, and we do a lot of that stuff with the team on with, like, especially our line outs. We'll say to the guys, right, we're having a line out here. Um, you've got the wind this way. This is the score. What are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. You know, like, just give them different things to think about rather than just the line out call or the starter move. Because um, we've got some grounds that we play on here, and it'd probably be similar to like you guys. Is you can play there on a really shitty day, and the wind and the rain is horizontal, <laughs> and yeah. then at half time it, it turns around, and you're still running into the wind. So you've got to be able to go, well, yeah, that six, yeah. the ball to six in the line out is not going to work, or you know, the, yeah. the long ball from the ten to the to the the open side wing, that's not going to work in in these conditions. So. Yeah. Just get, getting them thinking about different things and yeah. Yeah. I guess you've said it there now, really, the conditions of the match. So what mm. are you gonna do when it is horizontal rain, wind, 
I guess what you're going to do when it's absolutely scorching hot. <laughs> mm, yeah. But, but generally in Wales, it's wet, so it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Wet and yeah. heavy pitches. Yeah, so what do you guys do when it when it is dry and a, a bit warm? You know, like, do you play a different style? Because um, you guys wouldn't be used to big, like, open running spaces and stuff in... in in a warm climate and that that's kind of well conditioning that's you, you know what i mean yeah yeah i guess um for me my philosophy i guess my philosophy is probably changing all over the every every month but um sort of a game of movement and a game of power so game of movement for me is how, how i coach and try and try and beat teams basically by moving the ball keeping the ball alive um, outwitting defences, whether that be line-out, if it's scrum time, content area, game of movement, get people moving, beating people. And terms, then, my team is kind of open play, want to play rugby team, but teams that I play against are more game of power, so whether it be like robots, very structured, very good line-outs, driving mall, uh, scrum threats, um, or defensively very strong as well but that they would run straight lines on the gain line and try and gain go forward by just hitting the gain line all the time or kicking it deep so yeah, yeah I guess it depends what you want to do and what you want from rugby oh. yeah and it's good that you brought up there about your philosophy um, because I've coached teams and you just go you know what what I wanted to coach is not going to work with this team. <laughs> exactly. But you might not have you might not have um, the players in the positions that you want that you need to play those. So then you've yeah. got to adapt your game plan or what you want to try and achieve. So that's um, and that can be difficult for young coaches because you sort of go in, um, you know, like you might be predominantly a forwards based coach or a backs based coach, and all of a sudden you. Yeah you coach a team and you've got the actual opposite is is your strength and then you've got to try and move your whole thinking um around yeah to to accommodate and again develop those players um i was listening to a, a podcast the other day and, and the guy said he was a prop for so many years and he stopped playing and took up coaching and he said i had no idea what the wingers and the fullback do <laughs> yeah yeah like, he said, well, I know they're there. And he said, but I don't really know. Until I started coaching, I didn't know what they did. I didn't know what the 12 and the 13, you know, because I'm always, you know, in the scrums, at the rocks. Well, he said, so that was just for him, this huge learning curve. Yeah. So, um, yeah. That, try to yeah. Keep, that, keep that open mind and, and learn from people as we go through. Um, so... With that, we actually could segue to what we want to talk about next is um, coach education and then coach development. So, like, you've got all your, you know, you, you go and you go to the RFU or over here you go to your state unions or wherever and you do your two yeah. or three days in the classroom and you get your piece of paper and, and off you go, you're a level two coach or a level three, whatever level yeah. it is. That's, <laughs> coach, that's coach education. Yeah. And then the other side of it is the stuff where you develop yourself as a coach. Um, yeah. What's some what do you, what's some of the stuff you've done around the development side, and what some yeah. of the, some tips you can give younger coaches around that development um, of of themselves and the game. And... Yeah, I guess for me, you're right. As um, as a coach, and I want to get improve my coaching. I was like, oh, right, I want to do my level four next because that would make me better. Um, get a new badge and uh, people think I'm super duper coach. But um, no, <laughs> I think it's about <laughs> coach. So I'm like, I was, a bit, I was a bit like obsessed by being a level four coach, but more kind of old heads, I would say. Uh, kind of my mentors, I guess, telling me to be patient coach getting your coach experience in first and then kind of uh, progress so yeah obviously coach education would be the qualifications obviously at level one level two level three and all that 
to the coach development it is all about people development. So as a coach, um, things I've done to develop myself would be um, kind of, um, I use mentors. So can I talk to a guy called Brian Ashton, who's a coach in England. Yep. So he was a uh, very similar philosophy, I guess. <laughs> Maybe a little bit biased as well. But he's one person I talk to because he's kind of pushes the boundaries. He's, not, he's quite controversial, I guess, as well. Bit of a rebel. Quite like that about him. Um, yeah, so uh, talking to different mentors, people who are in the game, international coaches, regional coaches, Stephen Jones from um, Coaching Wales in the Attack. So I talked to him. He's, he's been in my old school. Um, I've also, uh, before my role at WIU, was I worked in business. So I had been business startups. But the reason I did that for three years was to talk to business leaders and how they lead their teams, whether that be one or two man team or leading a big organization. How do you get the best out of, um, out of people? Obviously, in a rugby setting, it's your. I don't know, 23 to 40 man squads, as well as coaches, as well as parents, as you know, as well as supporters. So it's not just like 20 people, it's sometimes mm. about 75 people. So yeah. that really helped me in terms of my coach development, learning from business people. So that's obviously mentors in the game, um, thinking outside the box in terms of business and leadership. Then going to see other sports, so talking to tennis coaches. I went to see, uh, I don't live too far away from Swansea City, um, who were in the Premier League in the Championship now, but went to see their academy system, how it works, and how they work with academy players, and how they um, deal with parents. So I learned quite a lot from that in terms of reviewing players after six weeks keeping a progress kind of chart with those players um yeah i guess i guess with covid and the lockdowns it's been easier to develop yourself i think because uh, you have to look within right what, what do i need to improve myself maybe for my, me personally maybe it's getting, getting that more knowledge in the scrum or line of decision making how do we connect like the forwards and the backs in terms of our attack from set piece because if you can get that right then you got uh, got some hope um so yeah i think it's all about people uh, in terms of my things i've done in sessions to help me develop um <clears throat> i guess in training you'd ask your other coaches to feedback but sometimes they would be at the start a bit reluctant maybe they would have been afraid to upset you or but since then, I guess we put, we've said, put boundaries, said, right, we need feedback for us to get better. Tell me what I need to do, improve. Mm. Um, so that's one way of doing it, whether asking your assistant coaches or your, your peers, um, obviously asking the players <laughs> for some feedback. So you can use your Google Forms so they can fill that in and you put it on your WhatsApp groups or whatever you use in terms of social media. And then uh, recording myself, maybe... Um, I've used uh, kind of mics or uh, got someone to film the session, but actually just film me. So I talk very quickly. <laughs> so um, that's one thing. I'm, I'm um, what's the word? Uh, yeah, I need to so not solve, but um, slow down when I'm excited. I tend to get faster and faster, you know. <laughs> yeah. So that's one thing in terms of my delivery and my tone. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think just recording the devices or filming, and then you can reveal yourself then. Yeah, I think that's a great way to review, review yourself um, and to actually just go, oh, geez, yeah, do I talk yeah. that fast? Or, geez, yes. no wonder the boys aren't <laughs> picking that up because I just, I didn't even understand what I just said. Um, yeah. You know, and it's it's very good to be, and you can be critical on yourself then. Um, yeah. I think the best one, really, do you know, um, like on a Tuesday after the match or Sunday after you've played, is I start now with, um, as for me and as a coaching team, how we're going to get better. So what we've done maybe in the last match, right, um, or oh, we didn't coach that well enough last week, I will say it openly to the players. 
So maybe the warm up was rushed, or yeah, how we delivered it wasn't great. I'm trying to think of an example now, but um, yeah, maybe there were our plan as a team wasn't right for that game. Maybe how we analysed the opposition wasn't right either. Didn't give the right information. Um, so yeah, I think uh, being honest and open to the group, like how you're going to get better as a coach, and then you can ask the players, right? How are you going to get better now as players as a team? So then it's like a whole process then of us all getting better. So. Yeah, and I think that's a good point. I think if the players can see that you've actually gone, guys, we didn't really coach that really well last week or, you know, we as a coaching group didn't perform this, you know, whatever. It's just that little bit of vulnerability. So then it actually opens the door, not opens the door, but it makes them more comfortable to go, yeah, okay, well, we probably didn't execute it well either. Um, you know, if you stop a drill halfway through and go, guys, this is not achieving what we want to achieve. It looked way better in my head than what it does now. So we're just going to stop and we're going to move on. Um, and the yeah. players go, oh, okay, cool. And then it gives them that opportunity to go, yeah, we're probably not doing what we should be doing. And because they know that you're, you're human and you've made mistakes and, he like said you might have analysed something wrong or, you know, didn't quite hit the mark on a couple of things you were coaching. Yeah. Um, and, and it takes the pressure off them as well. Yeah, because um, I was talking to um, Joe Sean Edwards, coaches, um, the French defence currently. He was yeah. with Wales. Um, how are you <laughs> saying? Obviously, we all focus on making the players better. But then if you the players can see that you're trying to get better yourself, as in... Maybe in your season, you're going off doing courses or you're meeting various people. And think, ah, so what? He's trying to get better himself. So then that will empower us as players. So that's a big thing I learned from him was, um, yeah, getting that, making yourself better, really. Yeah. And actually having the ability to ask the players how you, they think they can improve as like as a group, like what 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 we just done there in that catch pass drill, what do you guys think we could do next time to make it better? Because they if yeah. we all know we're trying to get better every day, um, it just gives them that and someone will come up with a little bit of gold and you just run it and then everything will just click yeah. into place. It is a coach development, you just need it there, see. So I'm about a big on questioning. So mm. questioning in a session. So you obviously ask a question to your players there. Um, I think that's I think that this is kind of the difference between an okay, average, good, great coach is the timing of you, your questions in your sessions. So I can do a lot of freeze and uh, pause in my sessions in terms of maybe it could be to highlight uh, body positions in a contact area scenario. It could be stopping, right, we've got 6v3 in attack. Uh, what are we going to do in this, this situation? And then rewinding that situation again in terms of, um, yeah, nailing the moment, really. I think sometimes as coaches, we let things go in sessions where it's a great learning experience for the boys and the girls. I think, I think it's doing it there and then is much more powerful than doing it on analysis or after the session, maybe. It's kind of live, in the moment, coaching. Yeah. Hot feedback, I think they call it. But um, Yeah, Co coachable moments is the word they use down here. Coach, yeah, that's it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, coachable moments, yeah. Um, and then it's also good to, if we, we, and we've done it a few times this year, is you've, you've done that, and then you, in the back of your mind, you're going, I've seen, I've seen a clip of exactly what we're trying to do. So then you go yeah. home and you find that clip and you send it out, the group, you go, this is what we're, and they'll go, oh, yeah, cool, yeah, we've got it now, blah, blah, blah. Um, so you're having that opportunity yeah. to, to actually just stop and let them have a look where they actually, like you said, they might, one guy might be out of out of alignment and that's stopping the whole thing. So if we stop, everyone stops where they are, he might go, oh, shit, yeah, I should be three steps back or three steps <laughs> to the left. You, you know, like he can actually see what he's doing. Um, yeah. And you can obviously use players then to move people in terms mm. of um, if it's like the backfield, say we've got two teams against each other, 
the other fullback could actually go and move their fullback to show him where he needs to be in terms yeah. of his positioning, just like peer to peer coaching. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's uh, yeah, it's cute, literally, isn't it? It's quite interesting. Um, the questioning and everything. Yeah. So with the with your questioning, rather than and like we we've, we've done the on the hot debrief and all that type of stuff. Yeah. What other questioning styles do you like? If you're just doing a drill before you, and it might be you know a three v two catch pass drill or something, you know, a nice a nice simple drill. Um, what questioning goes around that? Um, and when and when do you do the questioning? Yeah, good question. Good question. <laughs> so, I think it's been uh, having those open questions: how to, uh, what would you do differently? Um, that kind of thing. I some of my sessions I kind of film. Um, if I'm with, say, I we split the session, so back and forwards of split, so I can film a decision making activity, and then show it back on the on the phone. Um, most of the time on three v two situations, some players they crab across the p- a field mm-hmm. when they're receiving the ball from the floor. Um, so you can show their feet, show, things like that, showing their feet, their hips, their shoulders, which those are kind of the questions I would be asking in terms of um, body parts and what they're trying to do to the defence as well. Yeah. How do they deceive the defenders? How do they fix them? Um, how do they create that space? I guess rugby's a game of space, really, and how do you get into that space? So, um, yeah, I think it's... Uh, Knowing when to ask questions, really, rather than asking questions like every minute. <laughs> it's knowing yeah. when to do it, when it happens. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of young coaches when they start out, they either ask no questions, or like you said, they ask too many questions, and in the end, the, the players just <laughs> don't act. They don't actually know what they're supposed to be doing because you know every every time they go through, they get up and the kids just go, I, I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> Um, it's a funny scenario. I, co- I was coaching Scars in the 18s. And um, before the session, we used to meet in a team meeting room, <laughs> very <laughs> formal. And then I would ask questions to, we would split forwards and backs, ask questions to the uh, backs. And it would take forever to get answers back. So for me, these boys were 17 years old. I was thinking, right, these players are not used to play, uh, coaches asking them questions. Yeah. Um, it's like, wow, a shocking. Maybe, looking back, maybe it's my questioning, what I asked them, maybe it was um, maybe a hard, hard question or whatever. But um, I was shocked that nobody wanted to give, give any answers. They were afraid, maybe, to say the wrong answer. But I guess it's kind of alarm bells are ringing then in terms of the environment you've created or what was created before I was there. But, um, yeah, I've not been wrong, really. It's, uh, yeah. Have you had any examples of that? Um, Nobody giving you answers, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think we as coaches need to be comfortable in the silence as well. Yeah. And not and not just go because I know what I want them to say. So if they don't answer me in three seconds, I'm just going to go blah, and then they, <laughs> they and then they walk away and they go still don't know what we what he wants us to do because he's actually just you know rah 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 rah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have that encouragement around um, uh, answering the questions. We yeah. Um, so especially in in where we are at the moment, we've got a lot of Pacifica players. Okay, and yeah. they're and they're really shy. It's not that they don't. They just they just don't really talk. Yeah. If they don't know everyone, they won't talk. But you know they okay. know the answers. But you don't. Yeah. But you don't want to push them to make those. Yeah. Because so you've got to yeah, get you that know your people, Yeah, you've got to know your people, and you know they. Uh, yeah. When they start actually opening up, you go, yeah, we've. They're comfortable in what what the surroundings are. They usually take can take two or three sessions from just to go, yeah, I, yeah. You know, but yeah, it's difficult when, when they. I guess as a coach, you're like, ah, you you want to give the mm. answer sometimes. Yeah. Like I've got a young children who are three under seven years old, 
So when I ask her a question and I'm just going to let them, you know, <laughs> let them think, Daddy, let them think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and then obviously, <laughs> yeah, and guide them get, sometimes. But yeah, then. sometimes you get lucky and, and you get something back and you just go, oh, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. But that's gold. That that can actually work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, you, or even if they're wrong, you can sort of go, oh, that's, you know, that's, that's good. But what about something, you know, like you can, you don't want to shoot them down either when they, when they actually give you that wrong answer, you'll be able to. Um, manipulate that into something positive otherwise they just clam up as well so it's I difficult it's, yeah I guess it's um, that's, that's the importance of developing the people isn't it having that connection mm. with them so they're not afraid to talk your example there is brilliant really with um, yeah knowing your cultures you know and then, yeah it's really good and as an example this year we had a guy who English is probably his second or third language okay. and like he's really intelligent and you know but obviously some some things don't translate very well yeah um and i was in the habit of just going do you understand and he'd go yep <laughs> yep and i went i could see him i'm going he's no. not under <laughs> he's not he's not understanding so what i said to him one day i said did that translate to you? And he went, no. And I went, oh. that was the question. From then on, it was always, does that translate? And he'd go, yes or no. And if he went, no, well, then we could go back. But, yeah, he just went, yeah, I, I, I understand when he, he didn't. But if you yeah, asked him the right yeah. And it was just like a, a light globe went off and went, I'm just going to ask him to translate it for me. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um, yeah, I guess the big one is how do you check for understanding? Yeah. Like asking oh. questions, isn't it? Asking mm. questions. Yeah. I guess uh, yeah. I played rugby in France for a year and uh, they always used to say, oh, tu compris, Tom? Tu compris? Do you understand, Tom? Do you understand? It's like, mm, no, no. no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's exactly the same, really. It's, um, I guess, uh, yeah, you've nailed it there, really. Yeah, and just getting to know your players and you know, what, what their backgrounds are. Um, yeah. So no, that's really good, mate. Splendid. Um, Splendid. If you were going, if you could go back in time to the 16, 16 year old Tom, when you first started coaching, <laughs> um, what would be one piece of advice you'd give yourself knowing what you know now? Um, I think enjoying the process really of it i guess i've never i haven't really don't have any regrets really um i guess i've always loved coaching passion about coaching if you're passionate about it just make sure you help the people if you're going to help the players as in the person first then the rugby will look after itself that's my main my main advice to any coach would be that would be it's a people game, so look after the people first, get to know them, connect. Do those uh, chats you have before the session, after the session. For me, that's coaching. I guess in the session, obviously, you're doing your technical, tactical games, make it fun, blah, blah, blah. But then those moments you have before the session where you think sometimes it's a bit dead time and you do a kind of small talk with people, I guess those are the times you're making stronger connections and those moments will get you, you know, your team strong then for the future, I think. Yeah. So again, those moments before and after the sessions, even after the games as well, talking to the players, having the chat. Um, I guess when I started coaching, I used to be, i do the session, I would shoot straight home then kind of thing. Or after a match, we have a you know tidy up and all that, and then go straight home. But then now, I'm like the social aspect is really important to some people. Obviously, mm. some people it's not important, but um, yeah, I think it's get, making those connections stronger with your team. So um, yeah, what, what was it? I'm curious. What was your what was yours be? Oh, your advice be? my my advice to me <laughs> would be. Um, don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah, yeah. 
don't be an ass. Because I, I, mate, honestly, looking back now, I, I really feel sorry for the guys I coached in the first couple of years. I was a coach. I, I would have, I would have hated being coached by me. Um, it was very, authentic. You know, like we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. And if you drop the ball, we're yeah, doing yeah, yeah. push ups and that. And just like, <laughs> you look back now, you just go, oh, what was I? Th but that's how. But that's what we did back then too. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so don't be an ass. Enjoy it. It's fun. It's a game. Exactly. Um, yeah. And yeah, the the more you learn, the more you don't know. Or the more. Oh no, yeah, it is. You know, like the more you get yeah. into something, the more you just go, oh shit! I, you know, now now I've got to go that way, and then I've got to come back this way, and but yeah, you know, yeah. Because um, after after every season, I write down right things I don't know this year, mm. and I question to myself, and I got uh, 40, 50 um bullet points you know mm -hmm. right next season then i work it all out all those points and then next season i, I got another 50 again it's like what <laughs> yeah so um yeah it's uh ever evolving uh, game this coaching luck <laughs> mm, i know right and i think but, but i guess you, yeah you got to be in there to love it really because it, it takes a lot of time but for me it takes a lot of energy mm. So obviously it takes time, obviously your sessions, but the energy it takes in terms yeah. of your how you put your personality across, the energy you bring to the sessions. Um, yeah. You put, yeah, you know what it's like. Like on a Sunday or maybe after the whole week, you're like mentally but uh, fatigued. <laughs> you guys need yeah. to recharge again. But, um, oh, absolutely. And I think as young coaches, we tend to think that we just turn up and you know, put some cones out and, you know, your yeah. boys will just do what we need them to do. And then you just go, oh, that just looks like shit. But anyway. Um, yeah. And, yeah, just don't don't be afraid to ask people what you don't know. Um, no, 100%, definitely. And ask the players sometimes. Have they got a solution? Oh, Have yeah. They got... yeah. Yeah. What would like you we... do in this scenario? <laughs> yeah. Oh, and what, what would you do and, and why? Why would you do that? You know, yeah. because sometimes I go, well, this, this, and this, or I know this guy can't, you know, this back lift, what, you know, I saw that the winger was out of position, so that's why I played that play. Oh, cool, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know. But, yeah, some sometimes the players have got the solution. You just got to ask them. Yeah. And then, yeah, I guess the solutions, would, yeah. It's, and how, why you do where they would work as well, as you said, mm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember a coach asking me, right, reveal this um, uh, attack and how are you going to defend against them? So I was like, oh, right. I had a lovely PowerPoint presentation, looked fantastic. This is how we're going to defend. This is how we're going to keep them out. And then he asked, oh, where's the slide on how are you going to beat them? So I go, oh, um, well, no, no, no. I said, uh, we're going to defend like this. We'll keep them out. Said, oh, yeah, 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 I know that. But how are we going to win the game? Yeah. Like, all right, okay. Like, <laughs> all right, he's the art of coaching, I guess it is. It's like mm. this is maybe how you define the line out, how you keep a team out, but actually, how are you now going to beat them? Yeah. It's like, like all right, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's like okay, you just smash me, really. <laughs> I'm the defense coach, mate. The attack coach looks after that side of it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So. um yeah, no, it's um, no, it's curious. It's interesting, and uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's a thinking game, isn't it? This uh, coaching. Oh yeah, 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 very much so. Always thinking, always learning. So. In, in terms of your pathway in Australia, then, mm -hmm. yep. Obviously, in, in Wales, we have this um, coaching pathway. You do like your rag coaching. You do your badges, and then you go. Like your West Premiership coaching, then you go into regional type coaching, then you go into uh, international game. That kind of <clears throat> that's the that's the clean pathway, but it's not like that really. How how is your pathway? Is it different? Is it like that or um, in terms of a coach now? It's I think it depends on the state as well in which okay. you coach. Um, obviously they. 
look at, they earmark certain coaches for certain roles and they develop them that way. Um, and whether that's through, um, the, like some states, they'll look at the schoolboy competition to a certain level. Um, okay, yeah. Some will go, well, no, we need you to coach, you know, at this level or that level. Um, so, yeah, but usually you go, so if, like in Melbourne where we are, you can coach the, so we have under 15s, under 16s, under 18s and under 19s yeah. and you can coach those teams if you coach a junior team or a senior team what you don't need to be coaching the premier division teams to coach so they actually look for guys that potentially can are good coaches at that level rather than you know uh, coaching yeah. at a, at a that, so they they because we've got a, probably a smaller group of coaches here as well. Um, okay. Where I know in Sydney and Brisbane, it would be a bit different because you've got bigger clubs and big schoolboy yeah, yeah. competitions and, you know, heaps of coaches around the place. Um, yeah. what, what's your view on um, players, so ex-players then becoming professional coaches straight away? Straight away? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um no it's I'm a cheeky not, question though cheeky question no, mate, it, it's like anything it depends on the player yeah um and what they're going in to coach um and i can see i can actually see both sides of it um yeah i but like you said it's that ever evolving management of players management of this so if if I was in that position and I was looking at ex-players, I'd bring them in as specialist coaches. Yeah. You know, like bring them into, you know, whatever they whatever position they played or whatever they, that was their thing, bring them in to just run specific sessions for that group. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it's, again, smarter yeah. men than me make those decisions, mate. Yeah. Um, I, I always used to think it was pretty shitty um, when I was a junior coach, looking and just going, oh, mate, this guy's only just finished playing. What, is, what, is he, <laughs> what does he know? Yeah. But then yeah. I spoke to coaches and they've gone, he's actually been, like the guys that are actually at the top level <laughs> have been in that, environment. in that environment and coached by really good coaches for a long yeah. time. And you just go, yeah, that... They're bringing, yeah. they're bringing what they've learned back. So I can see... I can yeah, see it's, how... it's, it's, yeah, there's pros and cons, really. Because they obviously yeah, oh, absolutely. Day-to-day, -day, as in technical, tactical, um, what's expected as mm. for, for that club, isn't it? But um, in terms of how to coach and all that, obviously they've got to learn that, I guess, as they yeah. go in yeah. on the fly. So... Um, yeah, because I, I remember coaching um, the Scars in the 18s again, and I was asking them all when we were when I started coaching them all, what do you do for um, leadership? How do you develop leadership? Oh, we don't do anything like that like that. So like, why not? Like, like mm -hmm. that's so important in terms of leadership. Players, obviously, if you're a Scarlet player, you have to be a great leader. Obviously, you need your need to be good at your position and all that. But I think leadership plus a bit of X factor as a player makes you a professional of a player, I think. Um, so I was very shocked, really, that they were, we weren't going to develop leadership in our under-18s group. And these are the best players in this West Wales region, you know. Um, obviously, in the games, yeah, we had some issues with leadership. Why don't they know how to do this? So... If there's adversity in a match, how they would get over it. So I thought there was a bit of a gap in the market, I thought, where we needed to go next. But um, yeah, that's my view, really. Yeah. yeah it's an interesting... Um, it's an interesting conversation to have with a different people, um, like guys that have coached for a long time that haven't yeah. played at that, that high level potentially coaching at that level and then talking to the guys that have come through as players and are now looking at 
transitioning across into the coaching the coaching ranks yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting because some some of the best coaches around never really played at the top level no so no there's there's a several examples um mm. Obviously, some have, <laughs> but um, oh, 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 yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, you see, is it Steve Hansen? Obviously, worked in the police, played for Canterbury, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, it's, it, it'd be interesting now how rugby evolves as a general now. Yeah, as you've had the uh, Lions meet South Africa ball fest and the game of power. Mate, to be honest, I think I watched twenty minutes of all the. Of the whole three tests, I watched about twenty minutes, and that was it. Shocking, just... really. You're a rugby fan, and I'm. I'm. I was kind of the same. As um, it's like, wow, what's happening in the world? What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, it was. I just I watched the first bit, and I went, oh, I, I really like the set piece stuff, but even that was. <laughs> but even that was like there was nothing. Um, nothing sort of next level types. There was just a typical. We call them local derbies down here, like, you know, like two good teams that know each other yeah, yeah. playing. And you just go, yeah, it's, it's, your team's going to win, but it's really boring to watch, you know, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, yeah. How are you going to be extraordinary? That's what uh, Brian Ashton asked me as a coach. How are you going to oh, be that, you know? Yeah. Like, wow. Like what, a, what, a, what a question. Yeah. Yeah. Like what a that. question you can ask your players as well before a match in terms of inspiring them. How are you going to be extraordinary? Because most teams play the same way, and then the team that executes it on the mm. day wins the game, generally. Yeah. yeah. But what are you going to do? How are you going to be remembered, I guess, as a coach or a player? I like it. Yeah, that makes you that really... That really think. got my, um, you know, juices flowing, you know? Wow, mm. okay. All right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what do you want to remember? How do you want to be remembered? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's that's really good. Love it. Yeah. All right. Good. Tom, thank, thanks for your time, mate. It's been really good. Pleasure. 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 Pleasure to finally uh, meet face to face rather than just sending messages and emails to each other. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the uh, listeners will get. Some little bits of gold out of that. I know I've got a few pages of notes here myself, so it's always good to share ideas around the uh, coaching world, and hopefully yeah, we can definitely. all get better. No, thanks for the invite, first of all, and um, what you're doing with your podcasts and your the content you're making is brilliant. It's not uh, appreciated just in Australia. I guess us in Wales uh, have a look at your podcasts and your videos you make with the scrums. I we send them on to. Uh, our playing group as well. So, um, no, no, if, well if one if one if one player or one coach gets something out of it, I'm happy. You know, like that's, that's what it's about. You know, making yeah, everything. Exactly. Making so, uh, scrum better. and the, that kind of stuff is very important. As a yeah. as an outside half, as a number ten, if you haven't got nice clean ball, you know, <laughs> it's uh, it's difficult. Yeah, it was interesting. I, I listened to a podcast with um, Wayne Smith the other day, and just come. Oh this yeah, guy, this guy is like. The professor, and he goes, yeah. oh, I don't, I don't know much about scrums and lineouts. I just know what type of ball I want. I'm just going, mate. You are like the guru. He goes, but I got people that, <laughs> but I got people that do know how to do that. I'm yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, you're right. So, yeah, no, mate, it's been awesome. Thank you very much. Great to connect and um, enjoy the rest of your evening. I will, mate. <laughs> Foot of Ben Morgan, kept in the England, marching it on, whirling in a penalty.